What's good y'all? Welcome back to another Nitrous production on this channel, man. Listen, today we are back with another very interesting video. Now, after reacting to the video that I made yesterday about Young Dolph's killer, I actually came across this video right here. Now, apparently Lil Xan came on live and snitched on his manager and exposed the industry. Now, y'all already know, whenever I come across videos of artists or rappers exposing the industry, I'm always curious to see what they have to say. I already tell you all of the time about how demonic and negative that the music industry actually is, and people don't realize it. The only people who truly know what's going on are the people who are managing these artists and the artists themselves. So I'm curious to know what Lil Zan's... <laughs> this man has too many face tattoos, god damn! I'm curious to know what Lil Zan has to say about his manager and exposing the industry, bro. Before we get into this video, man, make sure you guys do leave a like down below and subscribe. I'm not going to say too much. I'm not even going to pause the video too much. We're literally just about to hear what he has to say. Let's hop into it, bro. Do you guys remember the whole little peep, uh, the story where his uh, management was giving him drugs and, uh, and, you know, and it just wasn't helping out and all that? Well, that happened to me on tour and uh his name my manager's name well i don't even like to call him my manager anymore uh stat quo remember that name stat quo because when i was on tour through 2007 you know 2018 to 2000 uh whatever the world tours with uh nikki and juice and all that um i was a drug addict back then right and um and my manager was supplying me with the drugs. He knew all my plugs. So if I couldn't perform because I was withdrawing back then, because, yes, I used to be a drug addict, um, you know, he would call, make calls, send $5,000 out here, $5,000 out here, just to ship the drugs to wherever we are at in the world, Switzerland or anywhere in America. And he's going to act like uh, he didn't do that, like a fucking hypocrite. And uh, I'm really feeling like I should take him to court, right? Because that I, that was the time I almost died from the drugs. I was so skinny, unhealthy. Um, yeah, but his name is Stat Quo. Yo, real quick, real quick. It's really sad to see how these managers and record labels really don't give a fuck about the health of their artists, bro. They really don't care about your well-being. All they care about is your streams and your image, bro. That's all they care about. Because what the management and what the record label is going to do is that they're going to have you do certain things that benefit them. If they need you to go to this video shoot or photo shoot that's going to pay this X, Y, and Z, you're going to do it. The manager is going to sign you up for it. You have very little say of what the record label expects from you. And shit like this is very sad because he's a little, he's, let me not say a little boy, but he's a young man, a young kid over here drugged out. I'm talking about Zanies, Miley, Burgers, that's all these different types of drugs. At this young age, killing his body. Meanwhile, the management doesn't give a fuck. They're supplying with him because they just want to make money off the kid. That's tough. I even fucking pin this. That's tough. Right here. Oh, uh, yes. That. Quo. Also, he took my car away, too. That I, uh, that I paid. That the majority of the money. How ironic. Peeps my, uh, fucking, uh, cover, too. And now he wants $30,000. Uh, of the remaining money to pay it off, which I paid literally. It's all my money in the car, and he won't give it to me. Um, and that's not even the real reason. I almost died on tour multiple times from him supplying me drugs anytime I needed it because I couldn't perform if I was withdrawing. And I, I've always wanted to make this case known. He is a terrible fucking human being. Um... It's tough. You know. He even had a doctor that gave him prescriptions. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it just sucks. You know, the industry just sucks. And that's a big reason why I haven't dropped another album. It's because it put such a bad taste. After I, got, after I got sober, it put such a bad taste in my mouth. Like, to even want to make music. Knowing how fucked the industry is. They just want to keep you alive long enough to make their, to make their fucking money. And if you die, even better, for them. even better for them. Cause guess what? It's easier to manage a dead artist 
than in a lot of one. Damn. And that's what sucks about the Juice World situation. That's a fact. It's because Juice was one of the most talented fucking people, and now they have. Bro, how in the world? I don't understand this shit either, bro. How in the world? Pop Smoke just passed away. They dropped the album with a whole bunch of other artists months later. Juice World just passed away. They literally just dropped the album. Like, how the fuck? Like, what is going on, bro? That nigga is dead. All right. <laughs> R.I.P. But that's crazy. I got the hiccups and shit. God damn. His whole catalog of music that did. And who knows if that's even what Juice's vision was. Like, you know what I mean? Shout out to Juice, one of the most amazing artists. Shout out X. X didn't die, obviously, from uh, drug-related issues. But, um, you know, it's just, it's just the same shit. They don't care about us artists. And that's why it's hard and almost traumatizing to make music at this point. And that's why I'm trying to find my love again for it. You guys can tell that I am sober. I don't look skinny anymore. I've gained weight. Like, the, the way I present myself. And, but Make yeah, sense. stat quo. The way I present stat myself. Quote, lawyer up, because seriously, I'm coming for you, bro. I'm literally coming for you. That's fucked up. It's really fucked up what you did to me, man. Really, it really is. And then, and then, when when he felt that I was useless to him, moved me way out an hour away to a city called Corona, California, just not to deal with me anymore. And the, and that's when the drug problem got even worse because I felt depressed that I was so far away from L.A. And it, it just spiraled out of control. He was supplying me drugs throughout every one of those tours because he knew that I couldn't perform if I was withdrawn. Now let this now let this be a prime example of why you should not do drugs, bro. Now that's one thing that I say all of the time on this channel. There is absolutely no reason to partake in drugs. There is no reason to partake in that gang affiliation shit. There is no reason to do these things, bro. Like literally speaking, you will live a much better, happier life if you just stay clean and focus on growing. <laughs> Like, so many people focus on being cool. Why don't you just focus on growing? Focus on growing your spirituality. Focus on growing yourself. Focus on growing your, your bettering your habits and improving your character. Focus on those things. <laughs> people are worried about the wrong things. People are focused on the wrong things. Like, I don't understand it. My boy literally got face tattoos for what? I don't know. Seems like he was focusing on his image. He wasn't focusing on his spirit he wasn't focusing on his character he was focusing on his image the shit that doesn't really matter the image doesn't really matter my boy has a bunch of face tattoos <laughs> for what <laughs> hey man that is illegal and fucked up and stop please homies just get your lawyers together my lawyers will be in contact with you and give me my fucking car back it's all my money put into the fucking car. And you want the rest of the 30K? Are you kidding me? And his excuse is, yo, I don't have a license. I do have a license. It's suspended. But, like, I want my fucking car back. Jesus Christ, bro. I never wanted to go public about this, but I had a very, very uh, interesting convo with him on the phone right now. Where he was just nonstop yelling at me saying, I didn't sell you drugs. We have screenshots. My homies kept those screenshots because they knew that one day this was going to happen. You know, and, and, and also in case if I died. So, uh, yeah, fuck you, Stat. Uh, fuck you, CI, CIE Records. Whatever the fuck your uh, stupid record label name is. And, uh, yeah, I was the only artist that you ever had, uh that ever made anything of himself. I don't know who else you have, but uh, yeah, I, I don't, I, they're not making waves. But anyways, uh, I guess I'll take some questions now. <laughs> um, Nigga said, I guess I'll open it up to a Q&A. Listen, man, all I have to say is this. Hollywood is a very dangerous place. It is very easy to get caught up in that devilish shit. When I'm talking about devilish shit, I'm talking about getting caught up in the in the race for the money, that greed, that that constant need for more, and all that lustful, bro, it's just a lot going on in LA, it's literally the devil's playground, literally the devil's playground, that's the only reason why people do so much drugs, bro, you know how much depression people are facing, you know how much inner demons these people are fighting, bro, 
That shit is crazy to me. Stay away from drugs. Let this video be a prime example. Everybody looks up to this kid for inspiration and creativity. You guys should be looking at this guy as an inspiration to not do what the fuck he's doing, honestly speaking. But look, I'm gonna end this video right here. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you do leave a like down below and subscribe. And let me catch you on the next one, man. Peace.